Okay, in this video I'm going to try to cover adding drop shadows really quickly for you. So, um, I've drawn my object like an apple or whatever sh object I have right here. Um, started with the lips tool, did some 3D effects, and I'm just going to add a drop shadow the manual way first. So I'm going to go down to my lips tool. Um, you can use a rectangle tool or any other tool as well, and draw a circle, basically, and um, or ellipse. I'll change the color to black to make it look a little bit more like a drop shadow, maybe a dark red even, or a dark color doesn't have to be black not all shadows are black so I can adjust it by making it bigger smaller skewing it warping it around with my selection tool or I can use my free transform tool down here so now you see that the objects on top of my my shape um, so I'm gonna send it to the back I selected my drop shadow go object arrange send it back and now it's in behind my shape so again I can adjust it tweak it however I want got a basic idea of what that's going to look like. So high contrast drop shadow right there. That's option one. Option two would be doing the same thing, just going to this step, and I want to make it a little bit more realistic so I can um, go to effect, stylize, and choose feather. Effect, stylize, and feather. That's going to add a little bit of a feather to my drop shadow, which will give it a more realistic effect. So I can play around with that feather radius right there I can move it up and down if I don't get the exact amount I want I can actually type it in there I'll hit OK I get it like I want a little bit more realistic um, again I can move the drop shadow up and down and I can skew it still and I can warp it however I want so I think a light close drop shadow is a little bit more realistic than a really far away drop shadow like looks like the apples floating now um, so that's options one and two there's another option as well you can click on your shape and choose effect stylize and choose drop shadow right here and check the preview box so you can preview it if you're working with 3d image like I am it's going to be a little bit slow you can adjust your X offset which is your horizontal offset just move it up and down or click it up and down and it's going to adjust from right to left. Your raw offset, of course, is going to adjust up to down, vertical offset. You can also change your mode. I think the default mode is multiply. You can change your default mode from multiply to any of these other color blending modes. They're very similar to what's in Photoshop. So if you want it to darken the background, if you want it to screen on the background, if you want it to change the color of your background, you have several options to choose from here. You can also change your opacity which will darken or lighten the, the drop shadows effect. You can also blur it. That's basically what feather does. Um, so the more it blurs, the wider it's going to be. Of course, because I, again I'm working with a 3D object, it's a little bit slow on my computer. Um, but you see, the basic effect of this drop shadow is going to be all around my object, and so kind of get an idea of what that will look like as well. Of course, since I've got the 3D object, it's going to be a little bit slow on this one. Um, all my all my information is stored under the appearance panel, so you see that 3D is stored there, the drop shadow is stored there as well. So, a little bit different effect by doing the the effect drop shadow um, through effect stylize and drop shadow.